It's a house with a girl inside. Such a nice and to his bride. Katie sees a friend in need or me. It had been a sort of depressing day. Katie discovered that sometimes, no matter how hard you try, things just don't go your way. Orby found out that it's really hard to share a donut with someone who doesn't even want a bike. <laughs> and Chance learned that even if you cuddle up really close, you can't always cheer a person up. When Katie jumped out of bed that morning, she started the whole day off on the wrong foot. First of all, when she stood in her chair and pulled a sweater out of the closet, every single one came down on top of her. Then when she was picking them up and putting them on the chair, she bumped her head on the closet door. At breakfast, when she poured her cereal, all the cereal in the box shot into her bowl across the table onto the floor, and it made a huge mess. Later, when she was helping Dad with the garden rake, she caught her favorite jeans on a nail and ripped them. At first, Katie had laughed and smiled, even though she was annoyed. By this time, I have to tell you, she was getting very upset with all the things that were going wrong with her day. When Carmichael came over, he crayoned all over her new coloring pad. He made a big squiggly line on every single page. Katie began to feel angry. Orby asked Carmichael to help him make a tent on the bed. But when Carmichael told Katie there were no girls allowed, I don't have to tell you, Katie was not at all pleased. As a matter of fact, she was really annoyed. Before Orby could explain to Carmichael that Katie was his best friend and that they did everything together, Katie pulled on the sheet and everything began to tumble. Everything, including Carmichael. When he started to cry, Dad came running. He told Dad that Katie had knocked him over, and before Orby or Dad could say that perhaps it was an accident, Katie ran out of the room. She didn't stop when she got down to the living room. She kept running. She ran out the door, right down their street to her favorite hiding place, Mrs. Perrette's willow tree. She climbed under its branches and sat herself down. She hugged the tree, and I know this is sad, but Katie cried. She cried and cried. She never meant to hurt Carmichael, but she did mean to pull down the tent he had made. After all, he had ruined her coloring pad, and it was brand new. The tree seemed to hug her back. In the big weeping willow, Katie felt safe and sad. She had been sitting there for a while when she heard a funny voice ask, How do you knock on a willow tree? It was Dad. A smile came to Katie's face, but the sadness didn't go away. Dad slipped under the branches and sat beside Katie. He told her that Orby had explained about Carmichael. 
He was sorry Carmichael had not been nice to Katie. She looked at her dad as tears trickled down her face. She started to tell her dad that she never meant to hurt Carmichael, but dad put his finger on her lips. He knew that. Yes, Carmichael was difficult sometimes, and maybe this had not been a good day for him to visit. Katie nodded her head slowly. She told dad that she was having a bad life today, and she didn't know what to do about it. Katie hoped that somehow dad would make all the frustrations of the bad day go away. And in fact, that is exactly what dad had in mind. He had the most perfect idea, and she was going to love it. He stood up and pretended to be a magician. He used his willow stick and his wand, and he told Katie that as of this very moment, she was going to start a brand new life. She never had to do things the way she did before. She never had to play with the same friends or go to the same places she had gone to before. Every single thing could change in her brand new life. It was up to her to choose what she would do with it. Katie stood still as a statue, as you can imagine. Really? Was all she could say. Dad repeated that she could change anything. Well, I have to say that Katie leapt with joy. As Katie walked home holding Dad's hand, she told him that she was going to change everything. Dad smiled. That seemed like a good idea. As Katie took the next step, she stopped and told Dad, well, she would never in one million years change Orby. He was her very best friend. Dad agreed that this was a good idea, too, and they walked on. Then Katie stopped again. Of course, she would never change Dad or Mom or Chance or their house or any of those things. Dad smiled. He was really glad to hear that, too. Then, as Katie walked on, she thought about all of her friends and the park and all the fun they usually had together. Then, a funny thing happened. When Katie thought about it, she realized there was only one teeny tiny thing in the whole world she would change. Dad stopped and looked at her. He asked what it would be. Katie told him it would be that this day had not been such a bad one. Dad looked at his daughter and he told her that she had already changed the day from being a bad one to a good one. This was her new life. As they walked up the front steps, Orby zipped out to meet them. He hugged his best friend and he told her he was sorry he didn't have a chance to talk to Carmichael. Katie told Orby that in her new life, he didn't have to be sorry for that because she was having a fabulous day. Orby was a bit confused but he was glad to see that Katie was smiling again. Inside, Mom sat with Carmichael, who was sipping lemonade. When Katie came in, she stopped and looked at him. She smiled at Carmichael and told him she was having a new life. And in this new life, she was having a terrific day. And she added that she was sorry for ruining his tent. Carmichael said he was sorry for ruining her pad and telling her that she couldn't play with them. And they shook hands. They were friends again. The rest of the day went beautifully, and everybody was happy in Katie's new life. And I have to say that if you ever have such a bad day that you think you need a new life, maybe you should try one. All you need to change is the way you feel about things. And your day will get better. doctor regularly. An eye doctor is called an optometrist. He has tools to look at your eyes and make sure they're healthy. If you don't see well, he'll make sure you get glasses to help. You can even pick your favorite frames. It had been a day of snowflakes. Katie learned that if you stick your tongue out to catch snowflakes, a whole lot of them <laughs> land on your nose. Orby found out that if you're going to smack a snowy branch with a stick, you'd better stand back or a whole lot of it will go down your neck. 
and they both discovered that when you play hard in the snow, even if it's cold outside, your snowsuit keeps you toasty and warm. It was the very first snowfall of the year, and fall it did. It covered up the whole neighborhood completely. And when the two friends saw the snow, they zipped themselves into their snow clothes and raced outside to play. The snow just kept drifting down. After lunch, for which they were very hungry, the two friends hurried right back outside to play some more. When Katie and Orby shot out the front door, Billows of whiteness greeted them. It was so white, they almost couldn't see anything for a moment. But soon, they saw a little red hat bopping along toward their front door. It was Yi Ping. Her dad waved from the street. Yi Ping told Katie and Orby that it was the best snow day ever. By the time they were standing in the front yard, Arthur and Belkus had joined them too. Everybody wanted to have fun, and everybody wanted to have fun in a different way. Arthur wanted to make a huge snow fort. Orby wanted to make a funny-looking snowman. The girls were a bit undecided. They thought maybe they would do something else. Arthur set to work, and so did Orby, and they both called to the girls to play with them. The girls watched for a minute, trying to decide. Then Katie had a wonderful idea, and she whispered it to Yi Ping and Belkis. With a giggle and a little dance of joy, Katie, Belkis, and Yi Ping set to work. At first, it looked as if they were making a snowman, or be called to them to help him. Then they made a bit of a wall, and Arthur was sure they were making a fort, so he called to them to join him. But the girls weren't doing anything of the sort. Katie rolled and hauled and lifted the snow. Belkis pounded it and shaped it. Yi Ping packed and molded it as best she could. It was very interesting, whatever it was. Then Belkis had a wonderful thought and hurried off home. Yi Ping had another, and Katie another. And with all the wonderful thoughts, the girls disappeared. Arthur's snow fort was growing slowly, and so was Orby's silly snowman. But both of them were intensely curious about what the girls were doing. The boys went over to look at what they had been building. There was no one around. Arthur told Orby if it was a fort, it was too lumpy and bumpy. And Orby told Arthur that if it was a snowman, it looked more like a hippo. <laughs> they, they both shook their heads to tell the truth. They had no idea what the girls were up to. Katie came back with some big felt markers. There was turquoise, yellow, and red. And Yi Ping came back with some long strands of sparkly yarn left over from her mom's knitting. Belkos raced up with some big fat sequins to sprinkle on. As the girls worked together, they laughed every time one tried something and it looked good. The boys couldn't help but notice, and soon Orby went over to Arthur, and he burbled that even though what they were making was great, whatever the girls were doing was starting to sound like a whole lot more fun, and Arthur had to agree. They walked over to see the very interesting-looking project. It had dots and was sparkling with the sequins and strands of yarn. Orby and Arthur stood there for a moment, trying to figure out what that cool-looking thing actually was. Belkis laughed as her sequins slid down the mounds of snow. They didn't stay on very well, but, but where they did, they looked terrific. And Katie was working hard at polka-dotting a colorful pattern all over their work, and Yi Ping was sticking sparkly bits of yarn in among the polka dots. Well, the boys stood there and waited. Finally, Orby could wait no more. He tooted that whatever they were making, it looked fabulous. <laughs> and, and he wondered if he and Arthur could help. <laughs> Katie raced over and hugged her best friend, Orby, and told him that of course they could help. Arthur wanted to help, but the truth was he had no idea what they were making. The three girls with bright, rosy cheeks turned to him and said, 
snow art. Arthur looked and all of a sudden he could see their plan and he had a fabulous idea and hurried home. Orby had an idea too and in a pink blur he was gone. He returned holding some spiky cones made out of construction paper. He had been going to use them for paper hats but putting them on the snow art seemed like the perfect idea. The girls loved the idea, but they realized quickly that the snow art needed to be bigger, so with a whoop and a scoop, everyone <laughs> began building out across the yard. Soon the snow art reached out as far as Orby's half-finished snowman and Arthur's half-finished fort. It was huge. It was just about then that Arthur came running down the snowy sidewalk. He had some long, billowing streamers that were trailing out behind him. He told his friends that he had to hunt through three different closets to find them. Everyone smiled. Now they were going to have the most amazing snow art ever. In a flurry of mittens, sparkles, paint dots, cones and streamers, and, well, all kinds of lovely things, the snow art grew into something to behold. Cars slowed down for a look as they drove by, and, and neighbors came over to get a closer look. Dad drove into the driveway and looked very surprised. He said he must have the wrong house because his front yard wasn't nearly that beautiful. The friends shrieked with giggles, and he staggered around the art, telling them that he had never seen such a, an extraordinary thing in his whole life. Katie and Orby and their friends were very happy with their snow art and had had a wonderful time making it. And maybe one day, if you have a big snowfall, you'll decide to make snow art too. If you do, I know it will be extraordinary just like you. It had been a dull day. Katie discovered that even if you make plans with your friends, sometimes they don't work out. Orby found out that even when you have the glue to glue sticks together, sometimes the glue can be all dried up. And they both learned that even if you paint bright pictures, the day can still seem dull. Dad was working on one of his projects when he came upstairs. He found Katie and Orby sitting on the top step, looking a little bored. Dad looked at them and sat on the step, too. He told Katie and Orby he really worked hard, but he had a problem he couldn't figure out. He sat and looked at the two friends and then grinned, and he had the perfect idea for a break. In the living room, Dad pushed all the furniture back with great grunting and shoving. And then he asked Katie and Orby to go up to the bedroom and bring down some pillows. Ah. Orby shot out of the living room before Katie had time to move. And she asked her dad what they were getting ready for. Dad smiled and told her, a rumpus. Katie said, oh, and ran out of the room. Katie was halfway up the stairs and looking right into a walking pillow collection when she realized that she didn't know what a rumpus was. Orby checked that it was all clear and tumbled the pillows down the stairs. Katie asked her friend what a rumpus was. Now, Orby didn't know either. Back in the living room, Dad had scooped up all the pillows. He used them to make sure the sharp corners of things were safe. Mom walked in carrying some milk. She looked at the living room and Dad. Oh, no, was all she said. Dad told her, oh, yes, and they would need two teams. Katie couldn't wait anymore. She asked Dad what a rumpus was. Dad smiled and explained that they were going to play family tag team wrestling. 
Everybody had to take off their shoes and anything that could scratch. Mom sat down with them. Dad said that a player couldn't hit or kick or hurt anybody. All you were allowed to do was pretend to fight. You could grab and hold and even push over, but gently. Katie and Orby looked at each other. Then Dad added that everybody had to make it look spectacular. And when you were caught or ready for a break, you had to reach out and tag the other member of your team. Then they could rescue you. Katie was really beginning to like the sound of the rumpus. It was always fun to wrestle with Dad. Mom and Dad showed Katie and Orby where the teams had to wait on either side of the pillars. They could reach in to tag the other team member. Dad told them that it would be the guys against the girls. And Mom and Dad started to show Katie and Orby how to play. Mom and Dad stood in the middle of the room. They circled around each other. Mom kept giggling because Dad was making the silliest faces. Then Mom pretended to push Dad. She barely touched him, but he pretended it was a really hard push and fell back. And Dad got up, picked Mom up. Mom shrieked with laughter. He put her down on the floor and put his foot on top of her tummy. <laughs> Mom tickled his toes, and Dad hated having his toes tickled. He reached for Orby to come into the ring and save him. Orby and Dad tagged. Orby flipped in, ready for fun, and Dad dragged himself out. He called to Katie that her teammate was a big cheat because she tickled. He was making a funny face and giggling. <laughs> Mom was pretending to spin around when Orby pushed her. She said that she wasn't cheating. Dad never said no tickling. <laughs> Katie told Dad that was true. Dad warned Orby to be careful. The girls were really tough. Orby had Mom around her legs. She couldn't walk or anything, so she reached and tagged Katie. Katie grabbed Orby's hand and pulled him off and tried to spin him around. Orby was as funny as Dad. He made all kinds of crazy faces, too, and tumbled to the ground, doing a backward somersault. And he landed right beside Dad and tagged him. Dad backed into the circle, pretending he wasn't sure if Orby wanted him to go in or not. Katie pushed him from behind, and Dad threw his hands up in the air, and then he dove down into a forward somersault. <laughs> Katie laughed. Dad got up and pointed. He told her nobody laughed at him. He grabbed Katie and hung her upside down, holding her very carefully, of course. Katie couldn't stop laughing, and neither could Orby. Mom asked if she wanted help, and Katie laughed. Yes, and Mom reached out, and they did an upside-down high five. <laughs> and Dad put Katie down gently and then turned to Mom. Mom and Dad wrestled, holding each other like it was a dance. And when Mom pushed forward, Dad moved back. And when Dad swung his arm around, Mom ducked down. When Dad swung his leg at her feet, Mom jumped. Then Dad grabbed Mom around the waist and lay her down on the floor. He sat on top of her. <laughs> and he didn't let any of his weight go on her, of course. And Mom laughed so hard. And then Dad told everybody he would now have his revenge. He raised his hands up high and then started tickling Mom. And Mom laughed louder and louder. Then Dad asked if she wanted to give up. And Mom shook her head no. But after a few minutes, she said yes. She couldn't reach Katie, and she couldn't take it anymore. Dad announced that the best part of tag wrestling was now. Everybody had to kiss the loser. Everybody crawled over and gave Mom big kisses as she laughed. When Dad let her up, she told Katie they'd win the next round, and they did. <laughs> and they played tag wrestling until everyone needed a drink. As Katie took her first sip, the doorbell rang. It was Yi Ping wondering if they wanted to play. Mom sat alone in the kitchen and giggled to herself. Her entire family was so silly. I think she loved them a whole lot just that way. And I bet sometimes your family loves to be silly, too.
just like Katie and Orbeez. And guess what? I bet they love you a whole lot, just the way you are. Thank you.